you, Booth. Welcome to NAB 2024, day one. Those of you all walking by, come on in. Your feet are going to thank you for it because you got two more days of this. So come on in, have a seat. We've got some open seats here and in the back. Uh, my name is Ed Lozano. I'm a Western sales engineer here at LiveView. And um, I, we do a weekly, or I'm sorry, a monthly show called Tech Tuesday where we look at new technologies that we use within the LiveView ecosystem. And that brings today's topic is this young lady is using the LiveView ecosystem in her business, uh, doing weather remotely for different clients around the United States. So without further ado, help me introduce to the stage, or welcome to the stage, Katie Frazier, meteorologist Katie Frazier. Hello, can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Cool. So Katie has been working with us and she came to us saying, hey, I've got, a, you know, I've got some uh, interesting needs to be able to get to my clients. And Katie, tell us a little bit about what your business is and what, how you do it and what the LiveView ecosystem does for you. Sure, so, um, well, I should give a little bit of background. I, I am a trained meteorologist, got my meteorology degree at the University of South Alabama and um, got my first job in El Paso, Texas, worked there for just over two years, and then I was making the transition into trying to look for another job, but then things didn't add up, and I was like, oh my gosh, what do I do, what do I do? And so it's, being a freelancer just kind of fell into my hands, and so now that's what I do. I started my business called KFW Studios, and I built a TV studio in my home. It's upstairs. And I have a full green screen and everything, studio lighting, mics, and everything. And basically, all I have to do is press live on the LiveView Smart app on my phone. And I'm actually able to broadcast for any city, any station across the country in need of a meteorologist, which is, there's a huge need for that because hiring is, is such a struggle. So LiveView has been able to make this uh, possible for me and, and man, it's, it's been great so far. And using, this, and using this technology has been very easy for you because you're able to transmit the signal, but in return, she can get a return signal back from the TV stations, which is very important for you as well. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know how many of you folks have ever been in, into a TV studio before, but as a meteorologist, you need a green screen and then you need to see what you're actually pointing at because without that, you're just looking at green, you're pointing at green, so you have to have what's called the return feed. So in a typical studio, you're going to have a return feed on the front camera and on two side monitors as well. But you know, this is a studio I built in my house, so I don't have all the technology that a, a typical TV studio would have. So you know, that was a problem. I, I needed to figure out how I could do that return feed. And yeah, LiveView also has a solution for that with LiveView Return. So on my laptop, I just you know, log into the portal and uh, if I'm connected to that station, I pull up the live feed and I have it uh, on an HDMI splitter to two different TVs and then I have my side monitor to the left and to the right as well. And that is low latency WebRTC video coming from the physical server in the station coming back to you. So you're able to, it's like you're there in the station with them really because of this ultra low latency. It's pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty good. So. Um, I mean, it's, it's essential to have that return feed whenever you're, you're doing uh, meteorology. Now, when you're doing IFB communication to the station, you have two options. You have the traditional dial-up, yep. or if the station is utilizing our IFB, she can utilize the IFB and take the IFB out of LiveView Smart as well. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, IFB is a total necessity as well because especially being remote, you know, I'm broadcasting for cities hundreds or even thousands of miles away from my home. So it's not like the director can just tell me, hey, you're on, you're on. So I have to be able to hear them somehow. And, and yes, so IFB is essential. Right, that's awesome. We always want to make this interactive. If you have any questions about her workflow, how she does this, please, you know, raise your hand. I'm, we, we always love at, uh, answering questions. That's what we're here for. Yeah, I don't bite. Don't <laughs> worry, I don't bite. <laughs> now, now, Katie, you have some exciting news that you're actually going to be doing this for uh, a station for a year. So you have all these huge opportunities that you're doing it. So the need for freelance weather persons uh, that's a big thing you were mentioning a minute ago. Yeah, so uh, just in TV news in general, it's it's such a struggle to hire somebody, like a TV personality. And so that's kind of where I come in play because I, I am a trained meteorologist. You know, you don't want to just put 
some random person up on the green screen and then if you actually have severe weather and there's a tornado and it's just Billy on the green screen, you know, I don't know how reliable Billy's going to be versus a trained meteorologist. So that, that's another benefit of, of hiring remotely. Um, but yeah, there's just a huge need. So my type of niche is, it doesn't have to be long term, it could be short term. You know, if uh, someone calls out sick and we're already set up with those connections with uh, LiveView Smart and LiveView Return, uh, it could be, you know, easy. Oh, we need you, and then I could fill in that night. But uh, it could also be for weekends for a couple months. If you're in between hires, you're having problems hiring someone, then I could just, you know, help out for a couple weeks, a couple months, and then, yeah, I just got a, a, a job for a year. So it's almost like I'm going to be working a real job again. So I have to get back to, uh, you know, no more weekend fun for me. <laughs> nice. Back, so, back to work. Back yeah, to work. Yeah, back to yeah. work. You know, but I only really have to work two days out of the week. Not too bad. <laughs> That's awesome. Now the ease of use. So if someone calls you and they say, "Hey, I need you on the air in a couple of hours," the ease of use of calling our 24-hour support team sure. is a huge benefit to you because you need it now. Well, I, I'm sure you recall that happened. She with called. Us she once. called me. Yeah, she called so me. So I've worked with three stations so far, and uh, I've only missed one hit. But I recovered. I came back. I only missed one hit, and uh, I had a. I, I was emailing Ed. I'm like, Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! What do I do? What do I do? This is an SOS, and and he was able to help. So lifesaver there. Um, it's super important. But the uniqueness I think is huge here because, as Katie was uh, mentioning, not just we're we're seeing a change in the business, not just with weather personnel. Uh, we've seen it with producers as well working sure. remote. So this hybrid work environment is not gonna change. This is gonna be the future, and being able to utilize technologies like LiveView Smart or the LiveView ecosystem is gonna be a play a, a very big role in doing this. I, I totally agree. I mean, as not only just news, but every industry is struggling to hire, but I mean, we're, we're talking about news in general. I mean, how, how are you going to fix those gaps? How, how are you going to fill these positions if you can't get somebody? So hopefully you could get someone in a couple weeks or maybe a couple months, but what are you going to do when that person left and you don't have someone to fill that spot? So that's why I think, you know, I'm, I'm that person to help and, and fill the gaps when needed. Questions? Anybody? Questions? Come on. Don't be shy. <laughs> you can always... Uh, like Katie said, here, hold on, we'll come over here. <laughs> is it all domestic or are you doing anything internationally for, uh, for customers? Well, you know, I, I don't really know any international people. So. <laughs> I, th I think I know a couple out here in the yeah, audience walking couple, by. So a couple people with, with different accents and whatnot. Yeah. Unfortunately, I only speak English. I'm trying to learn Spanish, but, um, you know, Spanish, Spanish weather is a little bit different than uh, English weather sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> but the ability to be able to do that from her home very easily is going to be huge, not just for you, but for the bu business in general, you know. And your setup, you have you have your key, you have a couple of lights set up. Uh, what else do you have there? I mean, wireless mics or? Yeah. Everything that a, a normal studio would have, just a little bit homegrown, you know. I mean, I, I don't have a, a nice nice metal shelving that maybe a studio has you know I, I have the you know home type of shelving but I, I have everything that it needs and uh, it's also interesting because I've had to put on different hats you know yes of course I'm the meteorologist but now I'm also my own produ production assistant too so I have to make sure all right is the mic on and is it charged and are my lights on and does it look good and so it's been fun to be able to do that but you know using live view has been so easy and uh, just a just a turn of the button and I, I could be live for any station so have you done any remotes for stations like hurricane coverage storm coverage in the field using, you know i could you right could. You i definitely very easily. could but i mean i am in el paso and so uh, these other stations. I, I worked for a station in Chico, California, Bend, Oregon, and Joplin, Missouri. And so mm, the, the only weather that was really crazy so far that I've dealt with was that terrible cold snap that happened, I think, um, either at the end of last year or the beginning of this year, where it was like negative 20. So, but 
man, I'm glad they didn't send, send me out there. <laughs> I, I hate the cold, so. Yeah. Again, we're talking with meteorologist uh, Katie Frazier, talking about how she uses Live View Smart with her remote weather business. We've got another question, Katie. Oh, wow. Hi, Katie. So you, you've mentioned Live View Smart a yes. couple of times. Can you just explain a little bit about what, what is it and why did you choose it? I sure can. So um, Live View Smart is, is just an app on the phone. And um, I have an Apple phone. And so you, you could download it from the App Store. And um, as long as you have access to the live feeds of any station that I'm working with, I literally am able to click which, um, I, I guess maybe server would it be called, or yeah, which server the station wants me to broadcast on, click it, and then I can go live, and then I could also track my mic, my um, audio sound, I could see how well my internet is doing, so it has a lot of nice features. And as Katie mentioned, she's using it on her iPhone. We do also support Android as well. And a new release of the software also includes video return. So you can actually get the re video return portal coming into your LiveView smart device, and that which will allow you to navigate and move the uh, return coming back. And once you have your shot set, you can actually take that full screen. So it actually helps as well. I know you have your two side monitors, but if you're in the field, this is beneficial as well. Sure. So so a lot of great uses for LiveView Smart, uh, not just for what you're doing, but for you know uh, remote reporters doing stuff in the field. We, we do have a lot of smaller markets that um, utilize this technology as well. So you know just so many different applications. But once again, yours is very unique because the business has traditionally been the meteorologists in the office. Yeah. You're in there using the machines locally, but now you're a thousand miles away from the station that you're working with doing a newscast. It may be 11 o'clock your time, but it's 10 o'clock their time. You're just all these different time zones that you're juggling. So just a very unique model that you, you've started and you do day in and day out. And it looks good too. I mean, it, it doesn't just look like I'm you know, outside at some random place. I mean, the, the studio looks like it's actually in, in a real studio, so. And they're able to do the clip and the key and everything. Yeah. Yeah, so there's no problems with that utilizing LiveView Smart. So, I mean, just such a unique uh, model. Where do you see this going? Where do you see, you know, the next couple of years with this, with your business and how the landscape is changing utilizing this type of technology? I think it's only going to increase. I mean, with people, once again, not really either wanting to work in news anymore or just the struggles to hire. There's more open positions. What are you going to do? Well, if you can't hire, you have to have someone. And you can put Billy on the green screen, but you know, when, when uh, the tornadoes come, I, I don't know how, how trustworthy Billy is going to be. We got one more question over here. Yeah, what has been the feedback from the stations on the video quality when you're sending that back to the studio? So, of course, when we're getting set up, we, we do a couple test runs before and to make sure everything's looking good. So, um, in the first couple weeks maybe of working with a the station, they might say, hey, you know, can you adjust the lighting a little bit or, or um, can you maybe move the camera forward or backward? Uh, but we really try and take care of that before we even go on air. That way it's good on air um, so so far I it, they've just been happy to have someone on air that's that's pretty much the main thing so and once again when you utilize live you smart or any of our products you can also bring in the IFB that's another communication is a key so with our products you can definitely incorporate the IFB into the units so live you smart which you use or our other field encoders you can utilize the IFB system uh, that we uh, can or supply or actually I apologize that the um, the customer injects in there they can come out of their RTS or ClearCom system and you can receive it coming out of your device or the field units if they're if you're using a field unit as well so right that's awesome. That's yeah. great. Now, Katie, oh, oh, we, we got a question one. over here. My apology. Question about, um, like, the map. Is the map coming from the studio or the, uh, the local that you're working for, or are you generating it yourself? 
Yeah, that's a great question. So uh, when I do my remote freelancing, there's four essential connections. It's the IFB, the graphics, uh, the live feed, and the return feed. So with the graphics, I do have to remote in to their weather computers, whether it's um, TeamViewer or Splashtop, whatever they like to use. And so that's just a matter of me downloading whatever software it is, and then I, I remote in. Because if you think about it, it would be very time consuming and nearly impossible to duplicate the graphics for each station. And, and of course, they want to uh, continue with their branding and whatnot. So yes, I just remote into their computers. So is that something that the Live View app can help you with at some point in the future? Well, that, that might be a better question for Ed. So we have a, a, a couple of different products. Um, Live View Studio, you know, you could integrate, you know, uh, images in the background, other sources coming in. So um, that, that's one possibility. Um, but right now, so she's just having the stations do the key and the fill on the other side there. So in getting that graphics look, I mean, it, it could be something down the road. But I mean, right now, this works for you. This workflow works oh, yeah. for you. Because yeah, it's, it's very simple. You just download whatever software. And uh, most TV stations already use a, a, a screen sharing type of software. But you think your engineers, they might need a remote in. I, I've had that happen when I was working at my local TV station. They, you know, oh, I'm out in the field and I, I need this update, but I, I don't have the a admin password. So they'll remote in. So normally it's the same software that the engineers will use. So, other questions? Katie, the most important question is, how do people reach you? How do they reach <laughs> Katie Frazier? Right. So, um, well, of course, here I, ha I have my business cards, um, my email, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter. I'm, I'm everywhere. So pretty easy to access and um, pretty email, active. E email address for you? How do they re email you? Yeah, it's um, katiefrazierweather at gmail.com. <laughs> That's pretty easy. That's pretty, pretty easy. easy. With, with an I, Katie, K-A-T-I-E, yes. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Katie, we really appreciate you coming out. You know, um, you're actually from Las Vegas, so you're, right. you're coming home to visit for a couple of days. But I know it's been really nice. Yeah. So, well, we really appreciate y'all coming out and listening, and um, and please come and check out the ecosystem for yourself here at the Live View booth. Again, uh, my name is Ed Lozano, a sales engineer here. Thank you all again for listening Thank and you. joining us, and, um, and please enjoy the show. Thank you. Thank all. you.